What's up, everybody? Thank you uh, for joining me once again. Today, we're going to be doing uh, part four of our European Coat of Arms uh, series. Just want to remind everybody, I have three other ones before this. If you'd like to go watch them, part one, two, and three. All right. About a month ago. And many other videos, as you can see. Make sure that you catch up on all the previous presentations if you're new to the channel i got so much good uh information and a lot of good presentations here from the past so make sure to get that information because all my videos are kind of connected all right and i want to show you this uh book right here all right so if i grab this part right here and i come to the translator this is what we get so the family book of jacob strife from billingen around 1550 contains coat of arms of his noble and Borges relatives university friends and colleagues from Ingolstadt, Tübingen and Freiburg. All right. Jacob Streit family weapon book. All right. Coat of arms. And for example, this is a lot of the ones you see in here. Things like this. All right. So we're going to go to a specific image though right now. All right. And uh, this is the image right here. All right. Let me close in. This is the one next to it. And this one right here. Look at this. All right. Look at that. A family crest. These are the words right here, just in case you can uh, translate them, the family or whatever it's saying. All right, again, this is the uh, coat of arms. This is the person represented by the family here in this coat of arms. As you can see, so-called Negro. Another page right here, another family crest. It look, almost looks like a heart. All right, got a, as you can see, dark skinned person riding a, a deer or something right here in this crest. And got another dark skinned person with the three feathers, almost look like the Indian depictions of tobacco Indians, right? All right, so you can see 
Again, that's the words, family, if you can read that. All right, there's a nice little crest, look at that. Very creative, the colors and everything. I'm grabbing the deer uh, antlers. All right, this is in another page right here. Zoom into this one. Okay, it says 1565. I don't know if that's the year, but it also says I-565, huh? Does that look like a one to you or an I? All right. Is it really 565? And look at that depiction, all right? So-called Negro in this family crest. Germany, I believe we are in, all right? Look at that. And it's the one on the side. Today we're gonna get into uh, another of the books here, the coat of arms books, historic. It's the uh, Wapam book or the coat of arms book, Wapam book BSB CGM 8030. And literally that's what they called it, all right? That's why you'll never find it. <laughs> this is actually uh, scanned in the digital collection of the Bayerisch uh, Stats Bibliothek, uh, the library here in Germany. You can, this is the one. Again, German manuscripts. Wapping book BSB CGM 8030. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, read what it's in here first before we get into it. Uh, this is in German, of course. So I kind of copied from here all the way down here. And um, I went over to Google Translator. They detected German and I got it right here. And it says, among the new additions to the Bavarian State Library, BSB is the CGM 8030 Code of Arms book. It is one of the largest medieval Code of Arms book. 359 sheets, approximately 2,811 preserved Code of Arms. At least 38 no longer preserved more than 100 empty shields and has not yet been discovered by researchers known nor quoted in the specialist literature. All right, they left this book out, a lot of the stuff. It consists of many segments, but apart from the position, which counts four sheets, it was made according to the predetermined criteria in a relatively short time, most likely in the years 1471 to 1475. The coat of arms on sheet two are Sixtus the fourth and the archbishop of mainz adolf ii of nassau the whole series of coat of arms from silesia for example are identical to those from the dona schingen coat of arms book and libro de arautus one can hypothesize that the author of cgm 8030 used a comprehensive coat of arms that was created in connection with the council of constance all right and that CGM 8030 was the source for the Conrad Grunenberg's coat of arms. We actually got into those on part one and two, I believe, on one of the parts, the Grunenberg, Conrad Grunenberg coat of arms book. But they're letting us know that this might be actual source where he got that. All right, he changed it up a little bit, but he still had, you know, some copper colored people up in there, you know. So we're going to see the actual source he might have got it from. It says these are only preliminary remarks on the research work on the dissertation, which refers to the Polish coat of arms in the Chronicle of the Council of Constance. A comprehensive article on the CGM 8030 armorial book will soon be published, in which the hypothesis presented here will be justified in detail. All right. They're letting you know we're going to prove what we're saying. Um, and Wikipedia says Council of Constance was a 15th century ecumenical council recognized by the catholic church held from 1414 and 1418 in the bishop frick of constance in present-day germany the council ended the western schism by deposing or accepting the resignation of the remaining papal claimants and by electing pope martin the fifth that's the council of constant and a lot of the family coat of arms we're about to see actually are in this book that we're about to go through right now all right, again, this is the BSB, uh, the CGM 8030. All right, so this is the book right here, digitized, all right? They'll, as you can see here on the side, they got the different pages, all right? And this is just some examples of how it starts out. 
All right, so you guys can see, just go through a couple examples here. So you guys can see what's, you know, kind of like what's in here. So it's not just, you know, a couple of color. They do have depictions of, you know, pale skin people, uh, but I want to show you that's, you know, coat of arms they never showed us. So again, I'm going through all the pages here, as you can see, uh, just to get started. So you guys can see what's kind of like in here. All right. And then, uh, as you can see here, oh, starts getting some swarty people right here. <laughs> and it keeps going. Also, what I wanted to show is, you know, the way they were writing these things, even though it's like German and all that, I've noticed that a lot of these writings look like almost like it's Arabic or, you know, Jiddish or, you know. So, you know, you, you take a look and uh, look at this. This is on the next page. So we start finding the coat of arms. That we came to see all right look at that and you know i can't read the uh, writing but you guys can go ahead and take care of that all right next page all right look at that next page all right so you guys can see i'm not just picking certain things it's like it's all over the book it's, we're, we're still in the beginning of the book right it said it had 2811 coat of arms here some of them are not done like this one all right you can see that Hundo all right this is on the next page you know so go back take one page the next page and we got this right here you see Remember who this, the Council of Constance, right? Holy Roman. Roman, right? Edomian, Edomite, Edomian Roman. This is on the next page. And somewhere into this, look at that. With the X and everything. The top. <laughs> and the rest of them with animals see no heads only this one all right a little further in the book i uh, find these right here this is one of them right here and then you go on this side down here you got oh, this coat of arms and over here you see that Thought that was interesting. A little further ahead, you got this image right here, and you can see he's a king and everything. Got the crown. All right. Look at that. Look at that. You can read the writing. That's what it is. Right, a little bit ahead. We got these uh, four family coat of arms. This one's not finished. All right, and then we got this one up here. Look at that. Kunbo Kuningen. Kuningen. I can't really read it, but that's the coat of arms. Really cool one. Those colors. They still wear these colors in a lot of the soccer teams over there. You know, in the traditions and everything in these places. That's kind of cool. Look at that colored right right on the family crest of these council of constants families and here's another one with all these other uh coat of arms let's zoom into him and it's, this is what it says over here if you can read it and again got the x the top the cross the top x marks the spot our shot Children of Arfishad, or what's going on here? All right. The other coat of arms next to him. Let's see. Roman clergy. Holy Roman clergy. Here's another one right here with all these other crests. 
and so on to them. All right. We have both complexions represented. As you guys can see, it's not just white, it's not just so-called black either. But even her, look at her curls, and that could be a light-skinned person, right? <laughs> but main thing I want to show is that they represent this on family crests, right? Of Germany. Why would they put this? I just want to show real quick, some of these are pretty cool and like just, you know, how they drew them in these books and everything. Look you know, how complex they get. And you know the symbology, a lot of this, the floor there, Leu, all right? This is the next page, so you guys can see. The next page, yeah, some pretty cool crests here and there. So you guys can see, they're not just putting white people all over the place either, you know, so we don't even know, you know, where these families are either. So, you know, no one's soon, just because you don't see that they're all white too. But here's another one right here. Oh, you got a little brother right here. Look at that. <laughs> and this is the family, I guess. If I could read that. If only I could read that. But look at that. All right. You see that? Primary source from the 1400s. This is a family crest from Germany from the Council of Constance. Okay. Look at that. And look at the colors. We still got these colors in one of our soccer teams here in Costa Rica. And Heredia, one of our provinces, has this color. And I'm going to go to the next page. And we find this fellow over here. Johan Befregimont Bergmer. Bergmer. Hey, man, you guys break it down. I know a lot of you probably can speak it and read it better than me. All right. That's the family crest. That's the colors, red and white. Well, they're probably not done. They weren't done. You see that? But these are some other ones right next to him. Pretty cool. This one's holding up the horns. Look at that. All right. And right here, we got uh, either the bunny ears or the donkey ears. On this crest, you see? And it's the other ones right next to it. See, the only one with a human face. This on the next page. And we got this drawn right here. This family coat of arms. Okay. Interesting. Look like almost like the card. You know, when you're playing cards, the symbols on the card, the clubs, the spades. Where does that come from? Where does that originate? Why has it got kings and queens and all that? Jokers. Okay, a little further ahead, we got this one. This one's pretty cool. Look at this one. Got one right here. All right. With the crown, then we got them up here. And that's the family, if you can read it. Pretty cool. This one right next to him. And some more over here. And you see again, the only human being depicted in these so-called Negro. More pretty cool drawing. They got an elephant right here. What appears to be an elephant, right? <laughs> be a dinosaur. A lion. And then uh, we got, look at this one up here. You see? Who's that? And she got the, the papal, remember, there was a woman pope. Women were actually popes too. All right, and she got the hat and everything. Look at that, and that's the family. The Dogon, <laughs> the Dogon hat. All right, take a look at that, the Black Queen. The family crest. Look at all the rest again. The only human depicted in this are all these family crests. And it's a so called Negro person. I right, got another one right here. It's real quick. You got the horns and everything. 
Okay. And that's the family crest. Look at that. Wow. Looks like a superheroes uh, thing, right? <laughs> All right, got another one right here. Zoom into this one. So, Frorenberg, Frorenberg, from Berdenberg, Frorenberg. <laughs> this is the crest right here, pretty cool with the wings on the crest as well. And coming out of the person, again, so-called Negro on the family crest of these Germans, again, it has nothing to do with uh, any Moorish captives or Moorish slaves. That's false to generalize that all these family crests that depict people of color, that's what is represented. That's false. We already read the actual uh, source letting us know that this is mostly the Council of Constance, Holy Roman clergymen, you know, and families. Another one right here. And of course, they show uh, different kinds. There's a person up here, pale skin, but then we got this right here. Very interesting with the horns and whatever that is in the middle of it. That's the family. Again, that symbol looks like a, either an N or a Z, like a superhero emblem. But it's obviously the same family. And again, showing a cup colored or so-called uh, dark complexion person in the crest, just like in the other one. They had the same symbol. All right, very interesting crest. Look at that. A little further ahead, again, look at all the uh, crests here. And there's two people represented here out of the whole, all the crests. And again, you know, dark complexion people is represented in these crests. That's the crest right there. Over this, we got this one as well. Look at that. Again, German, German families, right? German families from the 1400s. Has nothing to do with no Moorish captives. Stop making things up. It's the more crests again, the only person represented out of all these crests who so meant to him. Look at that. <laughs> and this is the family, I guess. You can read it, back up a little bit, zoom in, press right there. Again, that's the uh, person on top, representing the family. A little bit further ahead, we got a, we don't know if he wasn't just finished <laughs> coloring. <laughs> it appears that he didn't finish, right? And then we got this over here, up here. That's the other family. Again, dark complexion, king with a crown. That's the uh, family crest right there. Or luck. And this is some of the other ones next to him. See that one also look like they didn't finish because they didn't even colorize the hair. Just like this one, they didn't colorize the hair of the horn. So it's, you know, they weren't finished. This is what we find on top. More right here into this one all right you got the white hair the elder that's the family this is the crest that a lion a lion dragon what is that the one right next to him the bottom all right so in again that's the family right there if you can translate that This is the page that looked like they weren't finished. They only got to do one. And look at that, <laughs> very dark. He got a fish in his mouth. Fish, are they seafaring people? Seafaring people? Like how they represent the doggone, with the doggone people with the fish head. Seafarers, but very, I thought it very interesting. How they were colorizing, they weren't done with the rest of them. All right, we're a little further ahead. And I got these uh, family crests right here, coat of arms. Zoom into these two right here. <laughs> Look at that. That's so ill. You got the flowers around him. Look at the colors, the pattern. That was their family crest. All right, that's the family. Morph perk. Morph perk. Morphers. Oh. 
And that's the other one right here with the conquistador pony hat. <laughs> yeah. All right. So called Negro families in Germany, 1400s. This is their family crest. They ain't going to put no slaves or Moorish captives in their family crest. That's 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 pseudo. Moral crest over here. And I'm assuming to this queen right here. Look at that. The land, Landsberg, the Landsberg, I uh, can't read that. And that's the Presto, so you guys can take a look. Zoom into the queen. Zoom into the queen. German queen, 1400s. Got another queen right here. All right. Gotta show that one. The lions and the crest. Okay. All right, some more crests here. And zoom into this one. That's the family. You can read that. That's the crest. Pretty cool. Again, the colors they use to represent themselves. Look at the one next to them. Look like an instrument right here. Well, it's like musical, right? Like a musical family. I don't know. I'm just interpreting how I, you know. I'm not sure if that's true, but thought it was very interesting with his funny looking hat. Some more crests right here. And this one's really cool. Look at that. All right. So called Negro family from Germany, 1400s, Council of Constance, Holy Roman clergy, aristocrats, nobles. All right. That's the crest. Again, the only person represented out of all of them here. It's a very common trend here in these books. Another one right here. She's got that fish body. All right, that's the family. And that's the crest right there, the colors. So that means seafaring family. All right, just like the Dogon, Dogon, right? So where are they really coming from? Man? Another crest here. Look at the ones around her. All right, as you guys can see, not just dark skin. We don't know if they didn't finish, but they're finished here and they're clearly depicting dark complexion. And that's the crest. All right, again, the queen, she don't play. The queen, look at her face, she don't play. Got another family here, crest. We got horns as well. That's the crest right there. Zoom out a little bit. The one's right next to him, you guys can see. Another one right here, she's definitely a, a, a pope class. Bishop class. And there's another one right here. There's a bishop or pope. That's the family. Again, a woman. It's the crest. Pretty cool. Not sure if they finished. All right. Another one right here. This is the uh, family. You can interpret that. All right, got the horns, the crown with the horns. Crown, this is the crest. All right, back up a little bit. This is the one right next to it. Pretty cool, look at that. With the flower and the star. And the other ones, as you can see, the only person represented, again, dark complexioned. Another crest right here, just the family. And that hat is very interesting. Almost looks Asian to me. Almost. All right. And that's the crest. What it has inside us. That one of the animals that uh, Queen Khalifa had. These must be the same families. You see, they got almost the same.
Double press here. Zoom into this one. That's the name. It's the crest. That's seashells. What is that? Looks like little seashells, right? Could be something else. Wrote flower petals, leaves. But here's some more crest. I want to show you guys. And zoom into this one. Look at that. And that's the name. The queen again. Queen. That's the symbol of their crest. Look at that. That's kind of cool. The floor of the Leu, three of them. In each corner triangle, and that's the uh, queen right on top. This is the family crest again of German families from the Council of Constance. More crest right here. Okay, so into this one, and that's the uh, family right there. That's what it looked like. And the crest, look at the colors. All right, three feathers. Got another crest right here. All right, that's the family. Go down. All right, what we find here. And right next to him over here, got this family crest. Picking a dark skin person as well. All right, we got some more right here. And someone to this one right here. That's the name. And I'm again just showing this because they never really showed us these crests. It's not that I just want to make everything black. You know, I just want to show you that, you know, there's a lot in here, you know. And not just one or two, and these are not Moorish or uh, captives or slaves. These are the actual family crest of themselves. Another one right here. This is the family. All right, look at that. It was like the blackface uh, pictures, right? Like how they, you know, with the red lips. The family right here is their crest. Is that a hammer or tool? Like the ones right next to them also got like with the horseshoe. You know, is that their profession? Is that what they were? That's the family again. You can interpret that. That's their crest. Got an unfinished page right here, but I'm going to zoom into uh, this one right here. This one might not be finished either. You see this side is not colored, <laughs> but this one's finished and look how they drew her. That's the family. If you can almost get it, interpret it. And this is the crest. Pretty cool. This crest was almost lost. As you can see, the page was almost torn. Good thing they didn't tear this one. Maybe they was trying to tear it down. Basically, reached the end of this uh, book, you know, out of all the crests. I mean, most of them were just, you know, like figures, you know, not have uh, people depicted on them, but the ones that did, a lot of them, I would say majority of them were more of copper colored than pale skin eyes. So that was the uh, Whopping Book BSBC GM 8030. All right, some more here at the end. Okay, next, I'm gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go into the uh, George Brentel Wappen book or coat of arms book from 1584. This was 1582 1584. Um, a little bit of the info it says here uh, coat of arms book of the participants in the Augsburg race tag from 1582, but especially those who were held at the various race staff in Augsburg in 1582 appeared in person themselves. George Brentel uh, Wappen book again. And saying here, catalog of printed works of the 16th century published in German speaking countries of the Bavarian state. Again, the George Brentel uh, coat of arms book. And we go right into it. And this is kind of the images you got here, very artistic. All right. And we know this familiar image of the Hasburg family. 
uh, Charles V, my Holy Roman Emperor. Again, some very classy crests, as you can see. Very noble, aristocratic families here of Germany. All right, so I just wanted to show you a couple of the ones right here in the first couple of pages, and these are kind of the most of the crests look like. I want to show you some specific ones right now. All right, a little further in the book, we find this family crest right here. This is the name, the family most likely. All right. And you can see here the depiction, all right, with the hat, the Phrygia hat. Is that the Phrygia Liberty cap? This is the crest. Again, this is what they represented in this crest. A so-called Negro person, dark complexion, all right. And this Bavarian noble coat of arms of Germany, Bavaria. Okay, this is another crest on another page. And uh, these are the words right here. If you can interpret it, you can know what it means, what it's saying. And look at this, this is the Pope cap, all right? And look who they got up here. Look who that, that's a Moor, right? Moor, Moorish, but it's not a Moor captive. This is the actual person from the family. Look at the Dracon right here, the two lions, all right, again, from Bavaria, aristocrats, all right? And this is what they got in their crest. Holy Roman Pope Vatican family. All right, so this is from another page right here. And this is the words, if you guys can read it. The family, this is what they got on top. He's holding the sword and it's, was that a sephir and a, and a sword. Look at the clothing, the colors, the patterns, the symbology. Is that the spades, the Pope hat, the staff? And then we got and the family crest. We got another depiction right here, right? But look what they got on the top. You see, this ain't a Moorish captive. All right, look at that. That's nice. Beautiful crest, dope crest. Wow. All right, far. A good look. Dope crest right here. I'm in another page of the book, again, the uh, George Brento Wappen book. And I found this image right here. It's uh, Gro von Richard Richbes, Richberg. I can't really read it, but look, she's holding the pole cap there and, you know, the doggone hat. <laughs> That's a queen. All right, that's a queen right here on the top. This is the rest of the uh, crest, as you can see here. A couple colored, so-called Negro. A queen, all right, depicted in this very noble Bavarian family of Germany. This is the one next to her, and the ones on top. All right, so you guys can see the difference. And again, this is what they got in their family crest. This is what they're depicting, this is depicting themselves, okay? Family crest. Okay, another page right here. I'm going to zoom into this one. All right, if you can see who's on the top. Again, another female bishop or pope. The Flor de Lou. Luz uh, symbol right here. There's a family up here, just in case. And there's the rest of the crest. And they have white in this one right here. We just saw the same image. It was, you know, copper colored. But still in the top, we see the copper colored. All right, some more depictions next to her. And down here, you got like a parrot. All right, where do you find parrots? And that's what it looks like to me. Again, this is what we're finding up here, though. Look at that. Okay, more press to show you guys here. And it's on, on another page right here. We got two of them right here. Take a good look at these two crests. You see, so-called Negro up here, so-called Negro female right here. Zoom into her, all right. And this is the rest of the crest. Dope as the sign. Look at the colors again. Oh, it all means something. This is their crest, PPP, all right, three Ps, all right. 
three P's, that's their symbol right there. Look at that PPP and look at the person on top. This is the family, if you can read that. All right, and um, over here, this is the, the words over here as well. Uh, really dope. And that's the ones in the bottom. But you guys can see the difference. If I could have taught, this is a very dope picture right here. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Another crest I found here. I think I've seen this symbol in uh, another book we just showed. Okay. With the floor of the Lewis and the three corners. And as you can see, it's always been a copper colored woman on top, queen. And this is the family. Eberstein, Eberstein, Eberstein. All right, it's the one next to it. Eberstein, huh? Look at that queen. Look at the colors, the design. That's from their family. All right, so in again. And we'll continue more ahead. And we got another picture in here. What does that say? The Morstein, the Morstein, Morstein. <laughs> this is their family crest. You can see. And this is their crest in the bottom. One next to them. Right, Redenburg. And some more up here. This one got the dog. This one got the black queen, so called black queen, right? This one says the Moringen, Moringen, Moringen family, Moringen. Oh, this is the crest, what it looks like. All right, the depiction they have, as you can see. Moringen, Moringen. All right, and this is the ring, Ringberg right next to them. And the Moringen, or Roringen, Moringen. Almost sound like Moringa, Moringen. So again, that was the uh, George Brentold Wappen book or coat of arms book. Again, Bavarian noble families from 1582, 1580s. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to end it right here. We got a lot more uh, of these coat of arms books to go through. There's so many guys and I'm just in right now in Germany. There's more in the other countries as well. So we're going to get into all those. Thanks for tuning in. Much love and respect. Peace.